Zephaniah chapter 3, we'll begin our reading in verse 14. The Bible says, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments, he hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, Let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God is in the midst, in the midst of thee is mighty. He will say, He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we're thankful for your touch this morning. Lord, uh, we're thankful for you touching the singing and touching the testimonies. Thank you for folks that have already got help this morning. Oh, Father, thank you for the Word of God. Lord, it not only uh, will enlighten us, it'll transform us, it'll change us. We're thankful for the truth contained therein. Now, Lord, help your servant this morning. You know my infirmities. Lord, without your touch, we're not much anyway. And so, Father, we pray for your help. But, Lord, we pray for your people. We pray for a revival. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, certainly do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Lord, thank you for hearing and answering prayer. Thank you for being a good God. Now, Father, bless, be with the sick, touch Miss Lynn this morning. The Lord, continue to help baby Gabriel and others, Brother Bob and others. Lord, I certainly do pray that, Lord, if there's anybody amongst us today who are strangers to the grace of God, they're lost without Jesus, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Bless now, get glory to your name, use this unworthy vessel, we'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Zephaniah is a book of prophecy. It's a book of prophecy to the nation of Israel. We could take time and show you prior to where we read that the Lord is dealing with Israel during the great tribulation period. We could show you where the Lord judges the nations for how they dealt with Israel during the great tribulation period. Uh, but by the time we get to verse 14, uh, the Bible is prophesying about the kingdom. Now, you've got to understand, uh, a lot of people uh, get all messed up uh, 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 not understanding the kingdom. The kingdom of God is not come right now. We're living in the grace age. We're living in the dispensation of the time, of the fullness of time of the Gentiles. Uh, we're living in the day uh, 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 where folks are saved by grace through faith. Uh, uh, but my dear friends, uh, 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 the kingdom deals with the millennial reign of Christ uh, when Jesus will literally uh, 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 rule and reign this world uh, from the throne of Jerusalem. Uh, and we find that here is a message uh, uh, to the Jews, God's people, uh, uh, during the kingdom. Uh, notice some things, if you will, uh, and we'll get to the message. Uh, notice the decree in verse number 14. Uh, he says, Sing, O daughter of Zion. Uh, shout, O Israel. Uh, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, uh, O daughter of Jerusalem. Uh, uh, there is a decree for them uh, uh, to rejoice. We're talking about a people uh, that for the prior seven years have been hunted, uh, uh, that war has come to their nation, uh, that there's been no light uh, and no help, uh, but now deliverance has come. Uh, and he says, sing, uh, uh, rejoice, uh, shout, uh, do it with all your heart. Uh, uh, where you uh, was referring to, Brother Clint, uh, where you taught this morning out of Acts, uh, I, I preached a message one time uh, about that old boy got help 
and he leapt. Uh, I, I preached on, when was the last time you just had a fit? Uh, 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 hey, uh, when was the last time God got so big on the inside? Uh, you had a case that I can't help it. Uh, that's what he's saying. Uh, uh, get beyond your problems. Uh, get beyond everything that's going on. Uh, and rejoice in the Lord. Uh, we find a decree. Uh, notice the deliverance in verse 15. The Bible says, The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. Won't it be great when the Lord get, does, does the work on the devil? Hmm? We had folks talk about when they pray, the devil puts thoughts in their mind. Throughout your life, the devil tries to hinder you. There's coming a day there won't be no more devil. Huh? So the king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. What a blessing that day will be. Revelation 22, 3 says, And there shall be no more curse. There's coming a day we won't have to deal with sin anymore. Uh, what a day that's going to be. Huh? But then notice, if you will, the delighting. Look at verse 16. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hand be slack. The Lord thy God is in the midst. Uh, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. Now listen, listen right here. He will rejoice over thee with joy. <coughs> Think about that. We rejoice over the Lord. There's coming a day He's going to rejoice over us. Look what it says. He, he will rest in His love. He will joy over thee with singing. Today we've sang songs to him. One of these days he's going to sing songs to us. Now think about that. Who are we that the king of glory would joy over, rejoice over, sing to? I'm talking about what a savior, huh? Well, I got to think about this. You pray for me, my throat. It's not really my throat. This is one of the things I'm going to ask the Lord about one of these days. What is all this stuff that runs out of our heads? Where does it come from? It's trying to hit my throat right now. But I'm, I'm, I'm interested in verse 14. He says, Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad. And rejo-. I want to preach on. We have something to sing and shout about. Huh? There's too many people walking on their lower lips. Too many people uh, 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 got sad tales to tell. Too many people uh, uh, walking in their misery. Uh, Listen, friends, uh, we know the Bible says that man's days are few and full of trouble. You're going to have troubles. uh, You're going to have bad days. uh, uh, But if you get to looking at the Lord uh, and uh, you get to thinking about how he's going to rejoice over you and sing over you, uh, uh, you get to thinking about the goodness of God. uh, Hey, we've got something to sing and shout about. Uh, We don't have to be down and out. Uh, We can be happy people. Uh, Hey, we know our redemption draweth nigh. Uh, I got to thinking about some things that we have to sing and shout about. We can sing and shout about the fact we've been pardoned. I'm saved from my sins. I'm not going to hell. Uh, I deserve to go to hell, but I'm not going to hell. Uh, Hey, I'm glad I'm not lost. I've been found. Uh, Hey, I'm glad uh, my sins have been washed away, uh, been washed in the blood of Christ, uh, never to be remembered against me no more. Uh, What a blessing to know my sins are gone uh, and I've been set free. That's a blessing. (coughs) We have something to sing about. Why do you think we like them old songs, Save, Save, Saved? Why do you think... uh, we like to shout when we talk about being born again. Huh? If that don't excite you, you've probably not been born again. Huh? <coughs> Excuse me. That crippled fella, he didn't sit back down and say, well, I'll just stay right here. No. He wasn't crippled no more. And he was leaping and praising and rejoicing in what God had done for him. If you can just sit down after hearing about being born again, maybe, 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 maybe you've not been born again. Huh? I've been saved. Woe is me. The Christian life is so hard and so terrible. Huh? Well, you didn't get the same thing I got. Huh? Huh? 
hey, I'm happy I'm saved. Hmm? I'm excited about being saved. Don't tell me the Christian life's a boring life. Uh, it's an adventure. It's exciting. One day you're on the lower rung of the ladder, and the next day, hallelujah, God answers prayer, and you're on the mountaintop. What's better than that, huh? Hmm? Uh, everybody likes them action movies where somebody's fighting somebody. We fight with the devil every day. I mean, it's a good, it's a good life. It's an exciting life. But I'm glad I've been born again. I'm glad I'm not bound by sin. Uh, I'm glad I'm not bound by uh, all the wiles of this world. Huh? Uh, it amazes me how ignorant people are. But then I'm reminded that the God of this world has blinded their minds. They, can, they can't help it. But I'm glad, hallelujah, I can see through all the muck and mire of this world because I've been set free. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got something to sing and shout about. Hmm? I thought about this. We've got something to sing and shout about because we're prized. Do you know in Malachi chapter 4, the Lord says when he comes back, he's going to make up his jewels? Now, I believe you testified, Brother Donald, that the Lord put his treasure in a dirt bag. But he don't see a dirt bag. You are prized in his eyes. Matter of fact, verse 17 says he's going to sing and rejoice over you. I don't believe the Lord sings and rejoices over mud bags or dirt bags. But he sings and rejoices over his jewels. Now here's the real key. I believe, Miss Marcy, you testified. Sometimes you get down to pray and the devil puts thoughts in your mind. I believe somebody else said something to that effect with the devil messing with you. He only messes with those he fears. But this will help you. Get in the Bible and start seeing yourself as Jesus sees you. Now, Brother Donald, I know what you're saying. We know in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. But he dwells in our hearts. And when you get to looking at what God sees, he don't see your past. He don't see your failures. He don't see your unworthiness. You know what he sees? He sees himself. When you start seeing yourself, all of a sudden the devil won't bother you too much anymore. You start seeing him in you. You start saying, hallelujah, I'm saved. Uh, you get to kind of feeling like, bring it on, devil. Because Jesus, he values me. And again, the devil fears you. Hmm? Because Jesus values you. Hmm? Did you ever get talked about just because you live right? You know why they talk about you? Because they know you're special. They don't understand that you're one of God's youngins. They might say that you think you're better than them. You don't. But you know why they want to bring you down? Because they see something in you they don't have. Mm -mm. But deep down inside, they want what you got. We watched on Pure Flix this week uh, that uh, story, that true story of the Columbine shooting. Titled the movie, I'm Not Ashamed. And I didn't realize the first young person shot up there was a Christian girl and she was shot because she was a Christian girl she hadn't always lived for Christ but she made up her mind she's going to live for Christ and she got up and gave her testimony in a class and the shooters were in that class and they didn't appreciate it too much and she's the first one they shot but before they shot her she had a friend who was real loose in her life and her friend even got on her saying oh you think you can change everybody but her friend would later come to her privately and let her know she wanted what she had you know why they talk about you because they really want what you got huh we got something to sing and shout about that we're prized uh, that we've been pardoned can I say this we, we've got something to sing and shout about because we have peace in our storms uh you're going to face storms, saved or lost. But hey, when you realize Jesus is on your boat, your boat won't sink. Mm -hmm. What a blessing to have peace in the midst of your storm. 
Mm. There's nobody here that's faced anything where you've had your heart right with God that when you faced it, God didn't show up. Right. Got peace in our storms. That's something to sing and shout about. Hmm? Thought about this. We have a promise. He's promised that every need will be supplied. This world's gone crazy. Hmm? Uh, Miss Annette had a patient this past week that said that Trump was the reason the gas prices are as high as they are. I'm going to tell you, you believe that, you are crazy. Gas prices were $2 a gallon cheaper when Trump was in office. Huh? Maybe he's meaning Obama, because they was up there pretty good under Obama. But this world's gone crazy. But there are a lot of people really struggling. They don't know how they're going to make ends meet. Hmm? Groceries are going up. Gas is going up. Everything's going up except your paycheck. Mm. Uh, I'm wondering how everybody's thinking about that $1,200 check they got last year. Uh, yeah. It, it was gone about January 3rd of this year as far as inflation goes. Just trying to help you. There are people that don't know what the future holds. Well, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. And he's promised that all our needs be met through Christ Jesus. David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. I remember the 70s when Jimmy Carter was in office. And uh, I remember when the prime lending rate got to 15% and variable interest rates on houses were 24%. Uh, uh, can I say, I can remember those days. Uh, hey, you had to eat a lot of fried bologna, but I had something to eat. Are you listening? Uh, hey, uh, God always takes care of his people. Uh, uh, we're not uh, in some foreign area where God's worried and God has never brought his people through. Uh, he always brings his people through. Uh, we We've got a promise. Uh, it'll be okay, my dear friends. Uh, it'll be all right. You may have to go through some lean times, but it'll be all right. Every need supplied. I thought about this. We have something to sing and shout about because we know there's a purpose for our lives. A lot of people live their lives just for the weekend. Mm. We live our lives for eternity. We have a purpose for our lives. Thank the Lord for that. Then I thought about this. We have something saying shout about. Because we're about ready to be promoted. Hmm? The last two years, if it hadn't taught us anything, it ought to have taught us that, that this whole world's getting ready for the Antichrist. This whole world's getting ready to go into oblivion. And we're out of here, Jack. Uh, Trump's about to blow. Uh, the Lord's about ready to come get his people. We're about ready to be promoted. Mm -hmm. uh, from here to there in a moment, there's a twinkling of an eye. Mm -hmm. uh, from the off scour of the world to kings and priests in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Uh, so just hang on, neighbor. It's going to be all right. We've got something to sing and shout about. Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. You singing this morning? You shouting this morning? You rejoicing this morning? If you got your eyes on Jesus, you've got something to sing and shout about. Yes, sir. If not, you can get things made right with Jesus and you'll have something to sing and shout about. We could went on for hours over reasons to sing and shout. God's been good to us. We're all faring much better than we deserve. We're all reaping better than we sowed. We're all better since we met Jesus than we were before we, before we come to know him. God's been good. We have cause to sing and to shout and rejoice. Just to take inventory on your life. Look back over your life for the last few years, how good God's been to you and how he's blessed you. Hmm. How, how miserable you'd be without him. Mm -hmm. uh, just think about if you was in your current situation without him. Having no hope. 
no peace, no joy. Boy, we got something to sing and shout about, don't we? God's been good to us. I wonder this morning, you willing to do business with him? Some of you need to come and thank him for being so good to you. Some of you need to come tell him you're sorry. You haven't appreciated him like you should. Some of you need to come and let him know you want to sing over him before he sings over you. Maybe you're here today and you're not saved. You ought to come give your heart and life to Jesus. Maybe he spoke to you about something else. You just need to come do business. The altar's open. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Folks are coming. Folks are praying. He spoke to your heart. Just, just mind the Lord this morning. Let him have his way. Father, picking out a song, let's pray. Father, you've been so good to us. We do have a reason to sing and shout. Lord, we have cause to rejoice today. We ought to be in hell, but we're not going to hell. Lord, we bless you. Now, Father, whatever these folks are in the altar for, help them, bless them. Speak peace. Speak comfort. Confirmation. Whatever they need. God, I pray for somebody here not, not saved. Lord, they'd come give their heart life to Jesus. But I pray for your people. You give them victory. You give them strength. You put a spring in their step. Help them this morning, Lord. We'll bless you for what you do. And bless now. Speak to hearts. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.